So the House just rushed through and passed a national assault weapons ban and magazine ban as well. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think a federal ban on rifles and magazines is unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. So like I said in the intro, the House just changed a bunch of rules to rush through the vote on H.R. 1808, which is the National Assault Weapons Ban and Ban on So-Called Large Capacity Magazines. H.R. 1808 was pushed through the House and passed with the following vote here on the screen. H.R. 1808, also known as the Assault Weapons Ban of 2022, is a bill which states that it shall be unlawful for a person to import, sell, manufacture, transfer, or possess in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce, a semi-automatic so-called assault weapon. But the question is, what does this bill define as a so-called assault weapon? The bill states a semi-automatic assault weapon means a semi-automatic rifle that has a magazine that is not a fixed magazine and has one of the following offending features, a pistol grip, a forward grip, a folding or telescoping stock, a grenade launcher, a barrel shroud, or a threaded barrel. So really that's a broad definition of the most common rifles in the entire US. It also defines the term to be a semi-automatic rifle that has a fixed magazine with the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds. But it doesn't stop just there. It also states a so-called assault weapon is a semi-automatic pistol that has a magazine that is not fixed and has any of the following offending features, including a threaded barrel. So there goes handguns with threaded barrels, a second pistol grip, a barrel shroud, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some location outside of a pistol grip, so there go the AR pistols, a stabilizing brace, so there goes, there goes your braced uh, AR-15s, and also any semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm. So if there is some sort of pistol clone of a automatic firearm, then those are also claimed to be so-called assault weapons. And there's even more to this bill. It also bans semi-automatic shotguns as so-called assault weapons that have detachable magazines in any of the following features. A folding or telescoping stock, pistol grip, a fixed magazine that can accept more than five rounds, a forward grip, or the ability to accept a detachable magazine. Then the definition of a banned assault weapon goes on to list a variety of makes and models that would also be banned expressly under this bill. Now, if this type of scheme sounds familiar, that's because we've seen this play out in other states like California, where California originally banned so-called assault weapons under the Roberti Roos list, where they had a list of make and models that they banned as so-called assault weapons, and then they, they expanded it under California Penal Code 30515 to also target express types of rifles, AR pistols, shotguns in specific configurations based on their characteristics. That's pretty much what this bill is also doing, but it's taking a step even beyond that to target expressly some of those things that kind of fell through the cracks in California's law. So really they're learning from California and states like New York and really creating a very, very big national ban that goes even further than those states. So for everybody who's concerned about what's going on in states like California, New York, and you made fun of those states, now they're trying to pass something at a national level that's even worse. And as always, they try to fool people and say that this is only going to be a prospective ban on the sale and transfer, importation, um, transfer, all that of these so-called assault weapons. They say that we're going to allow you to keep your rifles and firearms you already possess under the grandfather provision, and the bill states that the ban shall not apply to the possession, sale, or transfer of any semi-automatic assault weapon otherwise lawfully possessed under federal law on the date of enactment of the Assault Weapons Ban Act of 2022. So here they add in that grandfather provision saying, well, we're only going to stop the future sale of these items. Don't worry, you get to actually keep and maintain those firearms, those rifles, and also those magazines that you already have in your possession. But this bill is not just also, like I mentioned, isolated to a ban on so-called assault weapons. It also is going to impact magazines as well. The bill states it shall be unlawful for a person to import, sell, manufacture, transfer, or possess in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce, a large capacity ammunition feeding device. So right there, that is your national ban on so-called large capacity magazines. The bill defines a large capacity ammunition feeding device to mean a magazine, belt, drum, feed strip, or similar device, including any such device joined or coupled. So that's actually going further than California's because they're even going to ban coupled magazines with another in any manner that has an overall capacity of, or can be readily restored, changed or converted to accept more than 10 rounds of ammunition. 
But again, they tried to soften that blow and they talked a lot about this during the debates today on the House floor about saying, well, they're going to grandfather in the possession of these magazines and you can still possess them as long as you possess them prior to this bill going into effect. A lot, like I mentioned during the debates today, you heard them say, and you heard the Democrats argue that this whole discussion that they are going to take your guns is completely false. They claim that that's not going to happen. They're only going to ban the future sales of these items, magazines and rifles as well. Now, we know that if this passes through the Senate and becomes law as well, it is only going to be a matter of time before they also go after those grandfathered firearms and magazines like they have done in other states like California. That's a perfect example where they had this assault weapons law initially, the Roberti Roos list, then they expanded on it. There were some uh, grandfathered rifles, but then those had to be registered with the state as so-called assault weapons, or you had to get rid of them. Then there was also the grandfathering of magazines initially. Then they changed that law to also close that loophole, they said, of people being in possession of those grandfathered magazines. So really this is just their first initial step. They just wanna get their foot in the door to initially say, no, we're only going to ban the prospective future sale of these items, but then down the road, they're also gonna go after your possession of those rifles and magazines that you maintain possession of, that this law said it was lawful to maintain possession of. They're gonna just change the law down the road to go after those as well. Now, you may be asking yourself, if this becomes law, how will they know which rifles and magazines were in your possession prior to this ban? And how will they know which rifles or magazines were being made post-ban? Well, the bill includes marking and identification requirements in it. It states that any rifle or magazine manufactured after this bill goes into effect must include a serial number and date that identifies when it was actually made. So this bill would create a really very clear cutoff of rifles and magazines that were made pre-ban and post-ban as well. So that is a brief breakdown of the National Assault Weapons Ban and Magazine Ban that just passed in the House, that they rushed through and passed. And again, it was something they said they were gonna table and then all of a sudden they changed the rules, rushed it through and got it passed today. Now, even though these two have passed in the House, I do not believe that they will have enough votes in the Senate, but I'm not willing to take that risk. In the last couple of months, we've seen Democrats get with Republicans, get Republican votes to get the red flag law passed in the Senate and also get the ATF director confirmed. Um, so we've seen Republican support of these gun control agendas in the Senate. So I am not comfortable at all saying that this has a 0% chance of also passing through the Senate. That's why we need to be vigilant about this. Again, they rushed this vote through the House. We thought that they were going to hold it for a while, um, but ultimately they changed the rules and pushed this through for a vote today and got it passed. So I fully expect them to make a full push to get the votes they need to try to break the filibuster in the Senate. Whether or not they will get those votes, I don't know. But to say that this has no chance of passing ignores the fact that a national ban once passed in 1994, that was a law in the US. And to say that this never has a chance, won't pass, no way it'll pass the Senate, simply ignores our own history here in the US. Again, we had a national ban on so-called assault weapons back in 1994 and went for 10 years. So I will be keeping my eyes on this. If I get any more information, if anything else develops, I will let you all know. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Algor's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signal to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So again, thank you so much for all of your support. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this is built by Arm Scholars and this nation will be maintained by Arm Scholars.